Gallery. Uh, I'm here at the um, US Media Launch for New Range Rover at the uh, Amangiri Resort. Uh, and I'd like to tell you a bit about the um, suspension and chassis parts on the, uh, on the new Range Rover. Okay, so um, from a suspension architecture point of view, this is the uh, first generation of our new platform. Um, the, the idea uh, with this new architecture was to make the car um, much lighter than it was previously without losing any of its robustness and, uh, and its um, off-road performance and to increase the agility and driving experience at the same time. So in order to achieve that we used uh, extensively lightweight materials where we could predominantly but not exclusively aluminium. Um, so uh, a, lot of the, um, a lot of the suspension cars are made out of aluminium using different processes. Okay here we are on the, uh, on the front axle. This structure that you can see uh, painted yellow is the front subframe uh, and that's made out of uh, a collection of uh, castings, extrusions and fabrications in aluminium. This component here you see is the front knuckle, which is uh, a forged aluminium component. This component up here is the upper control arm, which is a hollow cast aluminium component. And if you look at these two black parts here, they are made out of high strength forged steel. Uh, primarily because in that application the most efficient and lightest structure to use was uh, high strength forged steel. And you can see from the lower control arm that's enabled us to uh, design the part with a significant amount of weight saving in terms of uh, reductions in lightness. Okay, so here we are at the rear axle, uh, going through the components again. Predominantly aluminium, again the yellow part is the rear subframe this time. Uh, this, unlike the front, is compliantly mounted to the body structure and the uh, part is made out of a, uh, a hollow casting. Mike, uh, what does that mean, compliantly? It's um, mounted through bushes rather than rigidly mounted, which is the case on the front. Um, the upper and lower control arms are made out of uh, aluminium in this case and if you, you remember I talked about the structural integrity on the, uh, on the front. On the rear we were able to um, overcome the potential issues with off-road damage by adding some sacrificial ribs to the bottom of the, uh, the control arm so they can be abraded away and it uh, protects the structural integrity of the part. The other thing we did uh, when designing this new uh, architecture was to try and put some um, safety features into the rear suspension so that there wouldn't be a catastrophic um, failure of the part in the, in the event of a, uh, a large um, impact off-road. So this black component here is made out of high strength steel and you can see it's, um, it's got a, um, a, a necked feature in there and that element of the suspension will collapse if it's uh, if the if the vehicle is overloaded and protect all the uh, all the rest of the um, of the vehicle from damage so that's the most uh, cost effective component to replace and it protects all the rest of the rear of the vehicle um, so one of the things that's necessary for good off-road performance is uh, large wheel articulations and ground clearance um, so the air suspension allows you to have um, at variable ground clearance, so when you're trying to drive the car at speed on a, on a highway for example then the car can be at a relatively low ride height so the stability is good and the roll centre or the centre of gravity is low when you want to go off-road you want to raise the car and the air suspension allows you to do that because you can adjust the ride heights to suit the condition and the Range Rover has uh, four separate ride height conditions for, for driving on and off-road.